Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to number episode number 338 of the Mail Right Show. I'm terribly sorry. I kind of messed up the intro there a little bit, but uh, not everybody can be perfect, certainly not me. I'm here with my amazing co-host, and today we're going to talk about email marketing, which is one of the cornerstones of my own business, but strangely, I do not consider myself to be an expert in this. John is going to is going to lead us on this particular journey. I'm super excited about it. He uh, just asked me if I'd seen the show notes. The answer is yes. He did a whole bunch of them. So uh, we're, we, we're the royal we are really looking forward to you doing the show. But before we get started, uh, if there happens to be uh, some new people listening to the show, uh, who are you, John? What do you do? I am the joint founder of MailRight, mail-right.com, and we build great semi to full custom websites on WordPress, plus we've got a suite of great marketing automation and other tools that will help you be more of an effective real estate agent online. Over to you, Robert. Beautiful. And my name is Robert Newman, and uh, I've been doing SEO and inbound marketing stuff for a long time, uh, all focused on residential real estate. If you want to learn more about me, you can do it over at inboundrem.com. So without any further ado, today's show is going to be about uh, email marketing mistakes that real estate agents need to avoid. So John's going to talk about the things, and, and I'll weigh in here and there, because yeah. some of the subjects uh, I definitely feel like I have something to contribute, but John, um, what are some of the main, main, because you and I are both on a ton of realtors email marketing lists. So we are speaking from experience. I personally probably per month get anywhere from 30 to 50 emails from realtors who are my customers or people that I've talked to. I don't know what John's story is, but what are the email marketing mistakes that you feel like real estate agents make? Oh, well, let's start with number one, subject line. Subject line of your email does matter. You know, it's, all our inboxes are pretty filled. You know, I try and keep, you know, people say it's all junk. Well, if you subscribe to something, um, you subscribe to it. So it gets into your box. And I'm not too bothered if I somebody sends me something and I didn't exactly sign up for it. It doesn't get my blood supply going. As long as I can unsubscribe to it reasonably easily, right. um, I've got no problem. I, I do have a lot of marketers, people offering me services that send email through their normal email and there's no way to unsubscribe from it and they keep e emailing me. So... But let's get back to the number one subject line. Sure. Subject line is important. Um, if you if it isn't a catchy subject line, or you've got the timing, and that's linked to some of the other points that I want to make during this conversation, you you're going to have a problem with people opening it, the email and sending an email that doesn't get open is a little bit of a waste of time. What's your thoughts, Robert? Well, yeah, I agree. I mean, that 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 seems like a CS question, John. Is it a waste of time if people don't know it for your emails? Of course it is. But uh, but, and I agree that a subject line is one of those key ways that you do get people to open your email. Though I have some thoughts about that. But go, please r keep going. Well, but on the other hand, you got to be a bit careful about the um, what you're saying in your subject line because. If you're promising something and they open the email and the subject line has nothing to do with the content that's in the email or the person feels a little bit misled or over-promised, they're probably going to unsubscribe from your list. So it's a two-edged sword, isn't it, Robert? It really is. And uh, I was about ready to say something similar. I, I personally strongly dislike emails that that are clickbaity. In other words, you click on something, but you don't get what you what they're promising that you're going to receive inside the subject inside the email, which gives you a tricky balance to strike as an email marketer. How much information do you put in your email versus how much information are you trying to drive them to? Like if you're sending them to a landing page, like how deep does your email go versus the subject? I tend to do very brief emails. 
uh, because I have already done a really deep content piece somewhere else. So I'm not going to try to trick them into reading the email or make it all that long or in depth in most cases, not all cases. No. So let's go on to point two. Um, does your email offer any real value? Now, value is a very complicated measure and subjective measure. And what I mean by that, when, when I say to people real value, they tend to think length. So the more stuff they put in the email, um, the more they feel it's offering value. That is not the case, um, in my opinion. You know, um, there are, when it comes to maybe a monthly summary of the market linked to a PDF report, yeah, maybe. Um, but value is more to me sending, and it's going to be linked to some of the other things we're going to talk about. It's more linked about when you send the email is your list broken up into sub subcategories? Are you sending the right email at the right time to the right prospect? It's more, so it's a little bit more complicated when it comes to is your email offering value? What's your thoughts about that, Robert? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love long form value based emails. I don't have the time to write them, which makes it ironic that I'm saying it on the show live because I've, I've never really done long form value based emails, but I love, love, love. I've, I subscribe to a guy that does story based email marketing and he sells it and he, he sends me these massive emails and I love them. I read them. I read, uh, I read his emails. I also, I have got another guy uh, on my personal email accounts, not my professional, and he also sends me, his name is Simon Black, and he sends me massive emails about uh, the benefits of having more than one passport. And his emails are at least three or 4,000 words long. And I read them, the whole damn thing, like it's a newsletter. I love value-based. If, if you can do it, if you're an email marketer who is more comfortable doing email than blogs or can do both, Good God, yes, is what my answer is. Yeah, and I'm totally opposite, but it's probably linked because I have dyslexia. So I, I, at best, I skim read things at best, and then um, I will read something intensely. It takes me a little bit more mental effort. But, um, I, you know, it depends on how the long email is being laid out. Does it have just like a blog post, does it have good subtitles? Is it broken up into section? Can I skim read it and choose a section that does have value to me? So there's a lot of va valuables, but in general, um, I'm totally the opposite person to what you've just stated, yeah. and that. But that's also linked to the point because the point is they're not who you're sending these emails out aren't just one globular. They're, they're different types of people with different types of needs, with different reading. And, um, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. That I think that was the main point I was making. So value, I'm just trying to make out to get people to think after they've listened to this, to this podcast – his value is a bit more subjective than what people think. I I would agree with that. I would agree with that. So um, does I'm I'm going to skip. So does your email offer any real uh, value? Is kind of like the show notes that you put into me. Uh, Over reliance in email marketing is is going to be our next subject. But before we move into that, I have one thing to say, John, which is. Um, Long term as a form of inbound marketing, I want to make clear before I forget, I believe email to be one of the most powerful marketing tools that's left available to, to agents, to you, to me, to everybody. I, uh, one of the few new investments I've made because my business is doing about as much business as we're capable of doing right now 
So I'm not really marketing extra, but there's one exception. I have invested deeply in email marketing lists and email automation technology, which is the very next subject that we're going to be talking about. I have actually been spending money in that category, even though technically I'm not ready to expand my business beyond the place that it's at. So I find that to be, I just want to say this to everybody. My eggs are very much in this basket. So I hope you're, you're paying attention. Yeah. All right. So on to number three, marketing yeah. automation. I've right. got a platform, MailRite, and a fair bit of it selling. I kind of pivot and pivot, and I've pivoted again. Um, I think I've found a really not place now in the real estate industry that I'm happy where MailRite has positioned itself. So we offer a fair bit of marketing automation as part of MailRite. And I believe in marketing automation, but um, it can be used. It's a great, it's powerful, but with all great power comes great responsibility. All right? I, I forgot who actually said that. Spider-Man. Oh, did it? <laughs> and uh, um, if you if you really want to get technical, I could actually tell you the writer, but let's let's not do that. Yeah, let's, let's go. go. Let's, go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. let's just leave it to Spider Man, shall we? Uh, yeah. um, so, and um, what do I mean by that? By that, um, well, what I see the importance of marketing automation is like any kind of automation process that a real estate agent could utilize. Um, it's about being able to touch people on a consistent, regular basis that you wouldn't be able to do with marketing automation. Also, sub breaking up those different um, people into and tagging them. So you then have the opportunity of outreaching to them with the right amount the right amount it's a bit like dating dating's a little bit of a game isn't it if you kind of over somebody too quickly like a rash it probably put them off i know robert hasn't got this problem they all you know but i do uh um so uh um he's smiling at me uh um but um what I'm, I'm being a bit long-winded here, surprise, surprise, but what I'm making, it's a bit like a marketing video. What I see is um, utilise it, but what the purpose of it is to give you clear indications when you want to stop the marketing automation and then do that one-to-one -one engagement that is so important and one of the ways it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one phone call. It could be that they're given a clear sign that they go onto your bomb bomb list and you send them a customized video that you send to them. Or it could be that you make that phone call. But you the purpose is to get yourself in front of a person at the right time and have something of value to offer that possible prospect and that is the purpose and i see a lot of people using marketing automation as a way of keeping them literally to keep them away from having to do that one-to-one -one engagement is that making right. any sense robert yeah well to yes but i would phrase it differently so I, I'm following you. I don't know that everybody else is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say it my my Robert way. Um, <laughs> so um, the way that I would phrase what John was just saying is that people people over leverage marketing automation. They they overuse it, and and they are attempting to steal away the value of the one-to-one -on -one interaction, which is uh, defeats the purpose of marketing. All that marketing automation does in my experience is occasionally, like in terms of getting you a result, is occasionally it puts you in front of somebody that was already thinking of you anyway, 
and that person is reminded that they should probably call you. That's all that all marketing automation does. So if somebody's registered with something, and there are exceptions, there's, there's systems that are so well designed or fine tuned that they get a message in front of somebody at exactly the right second, that person is inspired to call you and they've never talked to you before. And that is where the exception exists within the rule. Inside the real estate marketing space, there's really only two companies that have done that to the degree that they've occasionally gotten results. That is Zerple and Wilopo. Other than that, there it really doesn't exist inside the real estate marketing space. Not as we're not as we're speaking of it. So to, to talk to your point, do I see agents and everybody else overutilizing um, automation? Uh, yes, I do. Should you overutilize automation? No, you shouldn't. You should be treating automation as an as a way to get you to speak to humans. Like that yeah. should be the gateway. Yeah. Like it's it's putting you in front of people so you can engage, yeah. not so you can't. All right, we're gonna go to break, everybody. Thank you for uh, bearing with John and I as we do our Laurel and Hardy act. And if if there if anybody actually knows who Laurel and Hardy is, then like me, you're a little old, sir or madam. All right, so here we go. Um, we'll be right back. Three, two, one. Welcome back to episode number 337. You're still here with me and John uh, Dinwood, and I am Robert Newman, and today we are talking about email marketing. The show is the Mail Right Show, and we are uh, have historically talked about all things related to digital marketing inside the real estate space. Um, we're one of the top shows in the category, so if you found us, congratulations. You should feel, you should give yourself a pat on the back. Anyway, John was deep into a list of things related to email marketing. Uh, we just talked about our reliance on email automation is, uh, is defeating the purpose, uh, which is to have real-life conversations. We're moving on to our next point, which is email is being uh, dominated by people on cell phones. So, John, why don't you speak to that for us? Yeah, because you, um, you, you tend to... Um... Either you're using automation or you're you've got um, a browser based system where you can put your con you can type your content, your message out, attach a market report, whatever extra attachments you're putting on it, blah, blah, blah. But almost 80% of people um, that are gonna view this email are gonna view it on their smartphone. So it's just a tip. But also keep keep it in your mind. And I'm just as I'm in front of a comp my computer almost all day, and I think Robert is. Um, so we tend, you know, it goes out of our mind that most of the people that are going to be viewing our websites, our content, blah blah blah, are going to be viewing it on a mobile phone. So before you send it out, quick tip, and it's the important one. View it on your mobile phone before you send it out because the way you kind of set it up, whatever service, whatever um, product you're utilizing to build your emails that you're sending out, if they're more visual based, you know, a lot of people just send out text based, which this doesn't apply so much. So it does depend on what you're sending out. But do view it on your eyes, I think, and I, I don't always do it because I'm under pressure, but I try more now, is to view something on mobile before I send it out. What do you reckon, Bob? I don't do that. That's what I reckon. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's wise advice. I think you should do that. I think I don't do that. Um, but then again, one of the ways that I simplify my personal email is I'm sending out short form, not long form emails. Once again, I'm not saying that that's the way to do it. I have really long form content on my website, so I can probably, uh, and I'm also making the assumption that people already know who I am, which is probably a bad assumption in some cases. Like I'm starting to acquire more email uh, users that I bought. Like I, I bought lists of qualified realtors and they seem to know who I am based on the click click through rate, but 
I don't know that a lot of people are landing on my content or my videos, which suggests that maybe they recognize the name, but they don't, they don't really know who I am. So, um, should you do it? Yes. You should yeah. absolutely do what John's saying. You should. Yeah, because uh, the people between um, iPads and, and mobile phones, Android or iPhone, is going to be large. So when I'm publishing stuff on my websites, I do tend to view them on my iPad and, my, and on my smartphone. I've kind of trained myself to do that more because that's the reality. So keep that in mind, folks. On to number five. And it's kind of linked to a couple of the other points, but I think it's a really, really, really important. Timing is all important. And it's connected to sending the right email at the right time. And this is linked to utilizing marketing automation and tagging and understanding. <coughs> I apologize. Um, understanding breaking up your list into as your list grows, you can do more, but you can have a um, a cold list that you send a monthly, they click on things, they interact, they go on to a warm list, and then you have your hot list that are people that you bomb bomb or you phone up, you try and engage them because they're giving you the right signals for that level of attempt of engagement. And timing is in all important and a lot of this is sending the right type of email at the right time what do you reckon robert um so <coughs> this, this one i'm hot on a lot of this shit oh, <laughs> that, that we've talked about i don't have the strongest opinions on but um th there is an increasing amount of development and focus by very clever engineers uh uh, MailChimp, a whole bunch of people. The, the guy that I use, which is Robley, uh, they're focused more and more and more and more on exactly when do they send this email to the end user. Now, my guys over at Robley track every single uh, email address and have the ability to understand when you're in your email box as an average and then send the email to you at that specific time. I can tell you that that particular technology is has increased my open rate with Robly in ways that it usually has not. Like I'm getting a, like a 20 to 30 percent better result out of this particular service, uh, uh, more so than any other service that I've ever used. With the way that Google and other email providers now segment out email <clears throat> into like updates, sponsored promotions. If your email is falling into the promotions category, which mine are, I've checked and rechecked, and you're using Google, which is like 50% of the email out there, that means that you're already getting segmented. Segmented. Um, so delivering the email at a time that somebody's in their email box is becoming a more and more important thing to actually get a click at all, regardless of how good your email is, regardless of what the subject line is, because you're going into a category that most people don't even look at to start with. Um, so, so, yes, I think it's incredibly important. I think it's going to become increasingly important. Um, that's my opinion on it. Well, you know, um, and number six, um, segmentation that's the fancy word for breaking up don't treat everybody's in but you, you've got to understand that even though robert said that he hasn't he's a very sophisticated email marketer i'm not up to robert's level um i utilize some of the tools that he talks about i know that robert's spent a lot of money and has a lot of services that he utilizes to get the best results from his email marketing. I'm not quite up to that. Um, but segmentation is breaking up your list, and it's very linked to what I said during number five, because segmentation, sending the... So 
Hank, so I'm waffling on listeners and viewers, and you're you're a real estate agent, and you ain't got bloody enough time as it is, and you're listening to this and thinking, well, if only I had the teams, but don't overthink it. Like I say, it's really linked to what I said in the previous point. Um, have a monthly newsletter. Do you know? Think of the t- think of the title. Um, you know, try and make it personalize you know if you're using a service you can still normally go in and personalize the first paragraph just spend a little bit of extra time adding a little bit of extra value to what is automatically provided that you send out i see a lot of these broker-based um monthly newsletters sent out and if you just spent a little bit more time customizing them you get a big benefit title sending that out, and then having some system where you can monitor who is opening and maybe take those and put them in a lukewarm if they're opening the monthly one over two to three months. And then have some calls for action which you can monitor. Do they go to your website? Do they download something, uh, a lead magnet? Then you can put them into a hot, that's a signal, that they've got more interest, they're looking at the market, they're at that time where they might be buying or selling, then you can send them a bonbon, you can then phone them. That's it, it doesn't have to be enormously complicated, it just needs a little bit of thought. What do you reckon, Rob? Well, yeah, I mean, e- email list segmentation using certain services <coughs> to send certain things to certain lists like yes it could be complicated could not be complicated i have engaged unengaged and um uh one other one other segment which i'm not remembering right now uh oh yeah yeah a list that uh that i that i scraped off my socials so i've got three marketing segmentations on my list but they all get the same emails i'm just looking at engagement rate via via which part of the list it is but there are obviously very very big important marketers hell there are people out there that do nothing but email marketing and they're part of very large marketing teams and they're solely responsible for segmenting lists and sending out certain emails to certain people at certain times so on and so forth what should you do as a realtor well here's my opinion You've got your prospects. You've got the people that purchased real estate from you in the past. You've had people who've listed and you've had people who've bought. If I was a real estate agent, I would break my list into those four categories. And oddly, I would probably do a couple pieces like I would create what would be called action plans. And those action plans, I would have a certain type of email content that would go to buyers, certain type of email that would go to sellers and then prospects and then a general list of maybe customers. Now, the general list of customers, I only email something personal to my list about once a year. So this sounds complicated. Setting up the list and the segmentation might be complicated. But what's not complicated is the strategy that you reach out to them with. I, I would say one or two messages that are individual that you've personally written to your customers every single year is more than enough as a real estate agent. So even if you were doing it once per year, one email, one handcrafted note that goes out to the people that have done business with you, I think it's a very small bar to rise to so that just so that they understand that you're thinking about them, that you have something to say. Um, that that is individual to your customers so i guess i could go a lot more and a lot deeper into email customization and and segmentation but i think that we've probably covered it pretty well we're also coming up on the end of the show so um if we're going to do more on that john let's let's hold off do it on another another episode and just to finish off I, i think this is all linked to your database and about build because people will move out the area, people will drop out your list. So it's all about the list, it's all about your database. If you're going to commit to digital marketing and building that database and engagement, but it's building up that database, and that is kind of when it comes to digital marketing, it's 101 when it comes to real estate. Would you agree with that? 
I would. I would. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've reached the end of our road together. We are uh, we are going to go to. Um, we're gonna. We're actually not going to do any extra no. today. We're gonna. We're gonna call the show good. Now, if you'd like to do any additional research on me, which based on my performance this show, I would think you would not want to, but uh, you could do inboundrem.com. Uh, John, who's really held up, done all the heavy lifting this show, uh, you can find him on mail rightcom And is there any other specific instructions that you would like people to follow in order okay, to reach out? Okay. Go to the Mail Right YouTube channel and subscribe to that. We've got some great, we've been knocking out videos left, right, and center on that. Got some great stuff. Beautiful. And I couldn't agree with John more. We've over over the years, we've done some incredible content. We've done it with each other. We've we've also had some amazing guests. Um, you really should take advantage of the idea of free information all because we're begging for your time. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. John and I appreciate it. We will see you the next time uh, at the Mailwright Show.